Hello everyone and welcome back. You join me now from a very strange time, which I'm sure you're all going through as well. The whole world is in pretty much stay in place orders quarantine. So that also means that a lot of my suppliers for lumber or metal are closed at the moment. So what I thought we'd do today is in an effort to just get out of the house and build something, we're gonna go through the scrap pile. The scrap pile behind me, which if you have a shop, I'm sure you've got something like this, has got some junk in it that you're otherwise never gonna use. So let's go digging through, see if we can find something that's usable and make a thing. I don't even know what yet. We'll figure it out. Stay tuned. So after digging through the pile a little bit, climbing up on a chair, I found this. This is a piece of ash. And I think what we're gonna do is make a bit of a tabletop, you know, for a side table or something. Maybe cut some bow ties into it. That's our dude. Let's start chopping. All right, so we've got the length, 60 inches, five and three quarter inches. This is all rough, so we're gonna have to plane it, joint it, do all that stuff. But I think what we'll do is measure out 20s. And chop this into three sections and then stick them together. Check it. We got two good faces on these pieces of ash. As you can see, the joints are no good because it hasn't been through the joiner yet. So we're gonna take care of that right now. This is a section I like to call troubleshooting shitty tools. As you can see, these gaps are pretty atrocious. Now, while it might have been my jointer technique, let's blame myself first and then blame the tool afterwards, but uh, it means that I've got like kind of one good side, but one not so great side. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is run these things through the table saw to true them up. Despite what you've se despite what you've already seen here, safety first. If you don't feel comfortable putting your hands next to a spinning blade, use a push stick. Okay, all right, it's time to glue these bad boys up. Now, some people like to use biscuits. They're mostly for alignment, less for strength. Since it's only three pieces and I've got a decent width here, I don't think I'm gonna use any because they're kind of unnecessary and it's pretty flat on top already. So let's clamp it up. And now we wait. Got nothing but time. All right, so while this is drying up, I'm gonna cut a couple of bow ties. I'm gonna use a contrasting wood. We'll see what I can find in the shop. As it's three pieces, so they're about 20 inches long now, we're gonna cut them down like on the edge just to true it up. We've got about, I guess, 17 inches or so of width left. This is not for anything structural. This is purely for aesthetics because we so fancy. Let's do it. Hey, looky, I found a piece of walnut. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark out about an inch and a half using my combination square there. Yoink. Got a midway point there. Mark a line. This doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, this isn't for anything structural. Mark. Mark. I'm gonna cut that out on the bandsaw. Look, it's a bow tie. So this is actually pretty thick. 
we don't need it to be this thick. So in an effort to save myself a little bit of heartache of having to trace that out and do a whole other one, what I'm gonna do is actually just rip this in half on the bandsaw and then I end up with two. Obviously, we still have to wait for this to dry up a little bit more, but we're gonna place them something like this, although more in the center. But look, there's a clamp here, so we can't put it there. But you get the idea. And I know these look a little bit rough on the back. It's because they are, because my bandsaw is not awesome. Um, but we're gonna sand all of this down anyway, get any ridges out, get all that glue squeeze out, sand it down, get it nice and flat, make it look sweet. All right, you join me the next day. Everything is nice and dry. We're gonna get this out of the clamps and we're gonna start sanding. Whoopee. got it reasonably flat with what I believe was 80 grit, but it's hard to say. You just pick up whatever you find around here. You recall our bow ties. What we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna set them in place where we want them. We'll probably do this one at a time. And I'm actually gonna take a utility knife and I'm gonna scribe around the shape, mark it with a pencil, get in there with a router, hog out most of it, and then clean it up with a chisel. Now that we have one of the bow ties marked out on our ash, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna set the router. What I've got in here is a straight bit. This is a lot easier with a plunge router, but I don't have one. So we work with what we got. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to lower this about a third of the way. Ash is pretty hard, so we're not gonna go all the way at the beginning. We're gonna do this in a few passes. Eventually, what we're gonna wanna do is get to a depth just below the thickness of this bow tie so that when we hammer it in, we can then sand it, flush it up, and have something to work with. All right? This is where we're at right now. What we've got is most of it pretty close to the line removed. So what I'm gonna do is just take a chisel, be sure to clean up all these little lines and hopefully we get a nice tight fit. the chisel do most of the cleanup work as you can see we got a nice pretty tight line and here's our piece and what I did was just sort of marked it with an arrow here and an arrow here to make sure that I keep this in the right orientation because again there's two of them so it's a little tight at the moment so what I'm actually gonna do is just take the utility knife and put a little bit of a chamfer on the inside of uh, the bow tie facing down and then we should be able to just hammer it home all right should fit all right. Just gonna hit it with a bit of glue in here. Spread it around with your finger. Get it up on the edges. Kinda helps if you have anything to backfill, like if you got some gaps, which chances are, if you're me, you will. Maybe a little touch more. Arrow to arrow. Line it up and here comes, hopefully, the satisfaction.
have it. One bow tie. One more to go. So we've nipped the ends off of this board, made it relatively square, and then I took my router and I added a bit of a chamfer to all of the edges, just to give it a little bit of lightness and to make it look a bit more finished. As you can see, we've got some burn marks from the router. We've got some little things from my clamps. So it's time to start sanding. We're gonna go up through the grits, start at 150, go to 220, and then it's time for finish. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, finish. So I'm using uh, an oil-based polyurethane, semi-gloss, love this stuff. We're going to wait for that to dry, we're going to hit it with some 400 grit, and then do it all over again, probably three more times, and then we're going to have a nice, smooth, semi-gloss finish. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Still not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this thing. Uh, it might turn it into a side table. could also very much be used as a cutting board, despite the fact that it has uh, an oil-based poly on it. No finishes have lead in them anymore, so technically everything is food safe if you let it hit full cure. So kind of depends on what product you're using. In this case, I think it's something like 28 days. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and share, do all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Helps if you plug it in first. Looking for a tape measure. Looking for a tape measure. Ah. Tape measure.